city of the American dream, along with practicing our reading and communication skill of inferencing, making inferences. We will, re we will review that as we move into the lesson. For now, I need you to make sure that you have your KWL chart out in front of you. We are going to be referring back to that and looking at what our objectives have been for this entire unit and these lessons and see if we have some information that we can add to that chart. Sama? Okay, that's all right. You can look at what is up here for now. All right, so if we take a look at the KWL chart, we have recorded already what we already knew about the American dream we understood already that it has to do with opportunities and freedom. Some of you felt that it had to do with sports and equality, there being a good economy. Um, the fact that the American dream for most of you included a new language as well. We wrote down some questions, things that you wanted to know. For example, you'd like to know more about American history and how that plays into the American dream. Um, you want to better learn the language. Some of you ask the obvious question, what is it? The American dream, what is it? Is it the same for everyone? And another interesting question was, is this something that is only in America? Or does this also pertain to maybe other countries as well? So I want for you to think about the videos that we watched that gave examples of the American dream. We saw how Sometimes the American dream can have a positive kind of outlook to it, and other times it had more of a negative outlook, and that was a little surprising for us. So I want you to think about the videos that we watched. I want you to think about the quotes that you read. We learned about how many um, people who had immigrated to the United States, they were asked what their idea of the American dream was, and we read all of those quotes as well. I want you to think about those things and let's take a look at our objectives for this lesson and let's think about what we have already answered and look at what do we still need to learn? What are we still trying to find out? So let's take a look at what our objectives, objectives have been. What is meant by the American dream? Is it the same for everyone? Let's think about what we have learned and kind of circle back to that. Would you say that you have learned anything about this yet? What is the American dream? Is it the same for everyone? Gerard, what do you think? I don't think it's the same for everyone. You do not think it yeah, is? because the American dream is basically um, so, uh, some goals, some aspects of life, and uh, someone can have different goals than some other. Very good, very good. So Gerard, I'm going to add what you just said to our chart for what we have learned. And if you agree with what Gerard said, you can add it to yours as well. So Gerard said, it is not the same for everybody. Whoops, am I typing? It is not the same for everyone because people have different goals. Is that what you said, Gerard? Uh -huh. Because people have different goals. Very good. Very good. I would agree with that. How many of you would also agree with that? Thumbs up. Good. Okay. All right. Let's think back to, so there's one of the objectives we have that we feel we at least got a little bit of an answer to. Um, our next question that we wanted to think about is, is the American dream part of your own immigration story? Is it part of, think about what we have learned the American dream is about. Is that part of the reason that you and your family immigrated to the United States? Do you feel that you have enough information yet to answer that question? Some of you, yes. Gerard, you say yes, it was yeah. part of your story. How many of the rest of how many of you feel it is part of the reason you came to the United States? Good. Good. Okay. All right. So, for those of you who feel that it is part of your immigration story, 
that is something to add to your what you have learned. Based on what we have learned about the American dream, you feel it is part of the reason you came. So write that down. I'm not going to put that up on our class chart because I don't think that that might be the case for all of you. So that is something that you individually need to write down. Now, let's think about the fact that we have really been focusing on making inferences. I have talked with you about how an inference, if you will remember the chart, the anchor chart that you were given, and then I also uploaded it for us to all look at together. Here it is up on the big screen and you have your own copy as well. But I have talked with you about the fact that making inferences is so important for communication. Because many times when you are reading a text or even if you're speaking to a person, there are many times things that are not said but that are just understood. And that is based on your background knowledge. And so we have talked about the important role that background knowledge plays in you understanding what is being said or in what you are reading. And so we have taken this skill and applied it to the American dream. And we have been looking at many examples of what people feel the American dream is for them We've been reading about it, we've been looking at movie clips, and you have had to infer whether the American dream has been seen as positive or negative for these people based on what they have said. And we are actually going to continue with that today in small groups, and I'll get to that in just a second. But if you remember, in order to make an inference, we have to take information from the text that we're reading or from the person who is speaking and we add to that our background knowledge, okay? And when we do that, we are gathering meaning from what is being said or what we are reading. We're gathering that meaning that isn't actually being handed to us. We're figuring it out, okay? So it's almost like being a detective, right? Do you know what a detective is? Someone who goes and gathers clues and tries to figure out what is happening, okay? So that is what we mean by making an inference, and we're going to continue on with that. If we go back to our objectives or our essential questions for this unit, we ask the question, am I able to infer meaning when talking with others or reading texts? And does my background knowledge hurt my ability or help my ability? to communicate with others. So I want you to think about the American dream. How much background knowledge did you have about the American dream before we started? <laughs> this little, not much, okay? So do you think now that you have read about it and we have discussed it in depth, if someone were to talk about the American dream with you, do you now have background knowledge that you could add to the conversation? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Now you would understand what they were talking about and you would be better able to make an inference if someone made a comment about the American dream. You might understand better what they are trying to say even if they don't come right out and say it because you have the background knowledge to add to that conversation, okay? All right, so how, do you, how are you feeling about what it means to make an inference? Do you feel, put your hands up. Five means I totally get it. Four means, ah, I'm almost there. Three, and as you get down to two, one, that means I know nothing. Okay, four, four, good, four. Looks like four is about the average. So there's a five, maybe a three. Okay, good job. Now, what we're going to do today is to continue practicing that making inferences along with the American dream. We're also going to focus on some new vocabulary today, okay? So make sure that you have recorded new information under the L for what you've learned so far about the American dream. And then I want to go ahead and get into today's lesson. Those of you at home on Zoom, I've been um, uh, projecting all of this for you at home, sharing my screen. So please make sure that you put your hand up on Zoom if you have questions 
so that I can see that and I will know to stop and ask. All right, so we are going to today, let me bring this up for you. We are going to again be looking at some different quotes from actual immigrants, people who have come to the United States from other countries. And we're going to hear what they have to say about the American dream. Now, I am going to be giving you and a partner one quote, one quote. And you and your partner are going to dissect that quote. Let's talk about that word dissect. What does that mean? Anyone know? If I say you're going to dissect a quote, what does that word dissect mean? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go, go deeper into the meaning. You are so smart. Yes. Gerard says go deeper into the meaning. That is part of it. Dissect also means to take apart so that you can look at the pieces. Have you ever heard in science class about someone dissecting a frog? Yes. yes. You actually will do that as you go on through the years, you've done that. Yeah. So if you dissect something, it means you take it apart and you look at the pieces. And so that's what you are going to be doing with an actual quote. Because when you first look at the quote, you might read it and say, oh my gosh, I don't know what that says. But as we take it apart and we focus in on particular words and figure out what they mean, that quote is going to gain meaning so that you understand and can make an inference. Is this a good representation of the American dream or a bad representation? And then I, after we have all each analyzed our one quote, you are going to share with the class what your quote says, how you have dissected it and what it means. I am then going to give you a paper that has all 10 quotes but you have only had to really dive into deeper meaning for one of them. And then you're going to hear what other students are saying that the other quotes mean. You are then going to put the quotes in order based on how much you feel they apply to you. So there might be one quote that you read and you say, that's me, that's exactly how I feel. You're going to rank that quote as number one. Like, yep, that quote, that's exactly what I feel the American dream is for me. You might then read another quote and say, no way, that doesn't sound like what I think the American dream is at all. And you would label that one number 10 because you're going to rank the quotes from one to 10. Does that make sense? Yes. So we're going to be diving into what these quotes actually mean, dissecting them, taking them apart, sharing that information with the class, and then you get to order the quotes, one through 10, on how you feel they apply to your life and based off what you have inferred that they mean, okay? Does everyone get what we're doing? Thumbs up? Okay, I'm gonna share with you a couple examples first because I, this isn't something that I think you can just dive in and do. I'm gonna help you. We're gonna walk through it together. Let me bring up an example to share with you and how you're going to do this. Here's our KWL chart. Let me go to our other one. I have all kinds of documents up here that we have to look at. There we go. Okay, now before I show you one of the exact quotes, and I'm actually doing one of the quotes with you so that you understand what this means, and how to do this. I first want to just do an inferencing quick check with you. All right, and this is just two quick questions just to remind you what it means to infer. We're going to take the information from the, from the sentences, we're gonna to add to it background knowledge, and we're going to try to figure out what is happening. Now, these two examples don't have anything to do with the American dream. This is practicing the skill of inferring just so you remember what that is, and then we're going to apply the skill of inferring to what we're doing with the American dream, okay? So, let me read this sentence to you out loud, and then I'm gonna ask you a question where you must infer the answer. The boy stomped up the stairs, slammed his bedroom door, threw a 
himself on his bed and punched his pillow. How's this boy feeling? Angry. Angry. Mad. Very good. I'm hearing many words. Frustrated. Great synonyms. So synonyms are words that mean the same. So I've heard angry, mad, frustrated. Exactly right. Now, what are the clues? Can you give me a clue from the sentence, Amani? Slammed his bedroom door. That's a clue from the text. You are adding to that your knowledge. Maybe you have slammed a door before when you're mad. That's your background knowledge. Okay? Give me another clue up here. What's another clue in this sentence that the boy is angry or mad or frustrated? Yes. Punched his pillow. Okay? So we're taking this is the information from the text, adding our background knowledge. Maybe you have punched something when you've been angry before. Okay, so that's how we make an inference. Let's do one more. With sweat dripping down my face, I decided it was time to jump in the pool. What's the weather like outside? Sunny, hot. Sunny, hot. All right, so let's talk about the clues. Can you tell me a clue from this sentence? Salma? Sweat. sweat dripping down my face. That's a clue from the text. I know that when it's really hot outside, I might be all sweaty, right? So I'm putting the text information with my background knowledge and figuring out it's probably hot. What else? It was time to jump in the pool. Would I go and jump in a pool when it's 32 degrees outside like it is now? No. I hope not. Okay, so that's my background knowledge also informing me or letting me know it's probably really hot outside. Okay, so there's your skill of inferring. Taking clues with your background knowledge and you're coming up with um, an evaluation or an answer to something that is asked. It's not being given to you. Now, here's what you're going to be doing. Let me show this to you. Those of you at home, you should be able to see this. I am going to highlight for you the quote. This is a quote from a man who immigrated to the United States from the country of Libya. Okay? Now, let me read to you what this says. It says, let me be a free man free to travel, free to stop, free to work, free to trade where I choose, free to choose my own teachers, free to follow the religion of my fathers, free to talk, think, and act for myself, and I will obey every law or submit to the penalty. So what we're going to do, or what you are going to do with a partner, when you are given your quote, you and your partner will look at the quote. First thing you wanna do is a full read of the quote. Now, some quotes are not this long, but you'll want to read the quote all together just so you kind of get the whole picture of what the quote is saying. Then this is where you start to dissect or take it apart. Let me ask you, if I could circle or underline a word in this quote, to look up to understand its meaning better, what word or words would you maybe pick out? Money? Free. Which one is it? Free. free. Okay, so the word free, like what to be a free man, free to travel. All right, so I'm going to underline that. All right, can someone give me another word? What's another word that you would want to know more about before you could understand? Obey. Very good. We're going to look up obey. All right. Can you give me another example of a word, Ahmed? Yes. And that is, I'm going to actually underline that whole phrase, submit to the penalty. Yes. That's a good one for us to look at. Gerard? My own. My own. Let me see. Where is that? Oh, choose my own teachers. Okay, let's go ahead and start with these phrases so that we can understand better what this man was actually saying. 
because our task is going to be to infer whether this man sees the American dream as a positive or a negative, a good thing or a bad thing. Positive is good, negative is bad. So let's think about this word free. For those of you who feel confident with what you think free means, do you have any words you could add to under, help us understand what it means to be free? Yes. Okay, so I am going to actually add able to do as you please. So you were right, Jordan, or Eric, you were absolutely right. So able to do as you please. So what this means is let me be a free man. Let me be a man who can do as I please. I don't have to get permission. I can travel where I want. I can work where I want. I can trade, which means do business, with who I want. I can choose my own teachers. So what do we mean by my own teachers? This was a phrase we were going to look at. So if I said I, can, I am free, which means able to choose my own teachers, it means teachers that are mine, okay? So he can basically choose like where he goes to school, all right? And then it says, if what he's saying is, if I have all of this, if I am free to live as I would like to live, I will obey every law. What is this word obey? Ahmed? Listen. I'm sorry? Listen. listen. I will listen and follow directions. So we could say listen and follow directions. Directions. Let me give you an example. It is very important that we obey laws of our country. For example, one of our laws in Indiana is that we cannot drive a car or get a driver's license until we're 16, right? So we have to obey that law. If you do not obey that law, you'll be in trouble, right? So obey means to listen and follow directions. So this man says, if I am free to do all of these things, I will listen and follow directions. I will do that for every law or submit to the penalty. Let's first take a look at the word penalty. Anyone have any idea what the word penalty means? Yes. You are so smart. Consequences. So a consequence is a type of punishment that happens when you break a law. So what this man is saying is, if I am free to do all of these things and live my life as I please, I will obey every law, I will follow the directions, and if I don't, I will suffer the consequences. So what he's saying is, if you are free to live your life as you please, why wouldn't you follow the law, right? Because you want to continue to be a free person. So submit to the penalty means, or I will suffer the consequences. So let me ask you, now that we have dissected this quote, he is saying, let me be a free man. Let me be able to do as I please with my life. And if you allow me to do that, I will obey. I will listen and follow directions to every law or I will gladly suffer the consequences. Let me ask you, let's infer. Take what these words are saying and we think we add our background knowledge. Do you think it was a good thing to be free to make your own choices in life? Mm -hmm. To choose where you go to school, choose who you do business with, choose where you travel? Okay, that's our background knowledge that we're adding to this. Would you say this man is inferring or that this man is saying the American dream is a positive or negative thing? Positive. positive. So I am going to highlight 
positive. Now, the next thing that you have to do is it says underline the words or phrases that were clues to help you make your inference. We underlined the word free as wanting to look that up and what it means. I feel the word free is one of those key words that helped us make the inference that this was a good thing, right? Because we all agreed that being free to make choices is a good thing, right? And so we have pretty much already underlined the information that helped us understand this. So this is the process that you're going to do with a partner, okay? So I am going to pass out a strip to you, to you and a partner, and it has the quote on it, all right? So what I would like for you to do first is choose who you would like to work with, someone that you feel you can work well with and really kind of think about what it is that you're doing and be able to dig in and dissect these quotes, all right? When you feel you know who you want to work with, I want you to come and get a quote from me. Okay, you will come and get a quote from me. I have them um, cut up right here. And you are going to be writing on a piece of paper any of the words that you underline, and you're going to try to figure out exactly what the quote means. You will then have to share that information out with the class so that we are able to understand your quote. Because in the end, we're all going to have to decide which quotes we best relate to, okay? All right, when you know who you would like to work with, please come to me and grab a, and I actually, I'm gonna let you pick. <laughs> you can't see what the quotes are, but you're going to get to choose, okay? Do you know your partner? Yeah. All right, go ahead and come and grab one. Which one do you want? You just pick. Just the middle one. Just pick. All There's right, one. pick one. There we go. All right, Ahmed, who's your partner? Gregory? Here. Pick one. All right. Who do you want to work with? Salma, do you know? Come grab one. Hi, boys. <laughs> Hi, girls. How are you doing? I'm just getting started. And because I don't want you rushing, I know we only have about 10 minutes of class left. I want you to know that we are spending the rest of this class period just on your one quote. We will not get to sharing the quotes and all of that until next class period, okay? So for now, just really think carefully about dissecting this quote and then asking questions to me as we go through this. We will wrap this up here in about 10 minutes and then continue with this on Thursday. Oh, that's a good one. 